So today we're going to talk about something which could be the future of Pro Valorant and uh, maybe even, you know, outside of that as well into kind of the premier system that's coming. Maybe this would even get into uh, that kind of sphere as well and influence even uh, more of the game. Uh, but this is the pick rates of a current tournament that is going on uh, right now in Valorant. And you might look at this and be like, what is going on? Because Sova is the most picked agent of 46%. There is no agent over 50% overall. Uh, Chamber is down at 43%, which is about 20 to 30% lower than he normally is. You've got agents like Cypher up at 21%. And this is before the Cypher buffs. What is going on here? How did we end up in this space where, I mean, everything looks great, right? All the pick rates seem pretty balanced overall. Uh, you know, no one above 50%. That seems absolutely wonderful. What on earth is going on? But before we get into that, today's video is being sponsored by Gosu Academy, who once more are trying to help you rank up in Valorant with their 30-day Valorant Academy. This is going to be 12 different sessions, so three a week each month, uh, led by pro coaches. You've got Mavera, Bonkar, and Neil Zinho, all pro players, all pro coaches, so definitely know what they're talking about. And as I said, it's three per week, as you can see just here, to try and help you improve at Valorant. And for the first 30 people that sign up using the code TMV at checkout, they will get the first month for free. It's just a month of free professional coaching. So if you are serious about getting better at Valorant, that sounds like a pretty sweet deal, but it's just for those first 30 people using the code TMV. Go into the link in the description and uh, sign up today. Thank you for Ghost to Academy for sponsoring the video. Well, this, of course, is the Boom TV Valorant Select Tournament that is currently going on. And the system is working like this, where each team is getting to protect an agent before each map. And then each team is getting to ban two agents before each map and each agent select on that map as well. And what happens is, you know, once these agent bans go in, it means that neither side can then play those agents. So, for instance, here you just saw the ban of the Killjoy and the KO. And you see that they are, you know, completely blacked out, right? Neither team can now select either of these agents and then uh, in time here what you're going to see is two more agents will get banned from the game and then teams will have to come up with uh, their kind of system overall and that is how we have ended up with that kind of agent selects as we just saw where no one is above 50 percent everything is kind of crazy and so here for a game on icebox we've got both teams protecting viper which you might expect you've got bands of killjoy sova chamber and ko and so now these teams need to come up with a way of you know trying to play this map without any of those agents on it and then by the time that both teams had locked in their full comps, you've ended up with this scenario here where we've got a Cypher being played on Icebox. We've got uh, Jet and Rays being played together as well. Very, very weird, right? And this is pretty much what every map, you know, looks like in this tournament where you get some, you know, some normal things. Obviously, the agent that gets protected will normally, you know, be a very meta agent on that map. But otherwise, there is real potential here for some very, very wacky stuff going on indeed. And so let's talk about the pros and cons of this system and whether this system should be implemented into the game. Obviously, in League of Legends, there is already this kind of system. And I know that a lot of people have talked about, you know, uh, agent picks and bans maybe being a good thing to add into the game and you know this is kind of a first look of what it might look like obviously some of the pros for this would be uh well one just look at what the meta might end up looking like right where we end up with a ton of different things being played you know even in matters where you do have maybe one or two agents that are doing very well right assuming that they will get banned some amount of the time you're going to end up even if there are a couple agents who are a bit too good you know, you're still going to end up with a very, very healthy meta and you're not going to see them on every map because like, for instance, on Icebox, you know, maybe protecting Viper is more important than protecting Chamber. And so you're going to end up with, you know, a, a meta where Chamber is only at 43%, which is much more, you know, fine rather than him being at, you know, 80% or, you know, high 70s percent, you know, where it, it kind of becomes a bit of a problem and every game kind of, you know, feels maybe a bit the same. The second thing that I think is a major pro of this system overall is, of course, the extra strategy elements that it involves, right? What agents are you going to protect? What agents are you going to ban becomes a key question, and it becomes a very, very interesting one overall, right? For instance, SQN here, you know, they're probably thinking, well, we've banned Killjoy, you've banned Chamber, but clearly they, you know, felt somewhat comfortable that they could still manage to play Cypher on Icebox, right? Which is a very weird pick that you would almost never see otherwise. But it is very interesting that, you know, they felt like, okay, we can ban Killjoy and we feel like you might ban Chamber, 
but we feel confident that we still have that cipher prepared. And for, you know, uh, SR Shopify Rebellion here, you know, they felt confident. Well, we got can play Jet Rays together. We don't need a traditional Sentinel, you know, even though that is a bit of a weakness, right? Maybe you'll come up Kitchen or whatever, where that normal trap might be. You know, we feel confident on that defensive side, even without a traditional Sentinel. And obviously you can expand this to all maps and all scenarios, right? What if... A team figured out, for instance, let's say that, uh, you know, Shopify Rebellion here figured out, like, we can play Icebox without Sova or Fade, right? And so we're going to ban Sova and Fade, and neither team is going to get to play them because we have figured something out, you know, that we can play without uh, any, you know, recon ability there. That would be a very interesting thing and would probably give them a big advantage as well as, you know, having figured that out and their opponent might be completely scrambling you know, to figure out how we're going to play this map without a Sova or a Fade and without that info uh, around the map, you know, whereas if you have worked on that and worked without it, you know, you might feel more comfortable. And obviously you can expand that to pretty much all maps and, you know, whatever is meta on a map, right? If you can figure something out, for instance, playing Cypher here on Icebox, right? Maybe you found a ton of interesting setups that no one's ever seen before. So you feel confident banning Killjoy Chamber, maybe even together. You know, those kind of things add in that extra layer of strategy of something else to get that right so that you can end up with a very, very good team comp and you can end up in a situation where you feel confident with what you've got. Speaking of which, this system would also incentivize people to play weird stuff. Right? Because the weird stuff probably isn't going to get banned. So, you know, if you want to play a Yoru or a Harbor or, you know, whatever, right? Something that is kind of wacky and out there and make that work, right? Think of like Paper Rex's Bind Comp. If no one had ever seen that before, no one's banning Yoru on, on Bind, right? But for them, it, it would have worked, right? And that's like a good example of something where you would, in this scenario, be rewarded for playing weird stuff for preparing weird stuff right and not just sticking with whatever is meta and trying to find that balance between how weird can we go before we just fall off that cliff edge you know what's the right line of finding like what can actually still work uh, whilst not being you know predictable for our opponents to maybe ban something and you know continually changing things up and getting weird but of course this system does have some flaws to it as well right one of the big ones i think overall is the with this kind of system this is not the game being played at the highest level right teams won't know what the other team is going to ban so there's always that unlevel of certainty and so you won't be able to fully properly prepare knowing full well that you can you know definitely play this team comp because you won't know 100 of the time what your opponent is going to ban and so you can never really fully prepare, you know, those full strats or, or understand that team comp to a very, very good level. You're never going to see a team, you know, be able to just consistently play the same team comp because obviously if a team keeps winning with one comp, well, eventually the opponents are going to ban you from being able to, you know, play that comp and whatever works with it. And so you're going to end up with a situation where the game just isn't being played at the very highest level. It's being played at a high level, but not perhaps the highest that it could be. You're not getting what is the most meta agents on each map. And you're also not going to have the preparation time to really, you know, fully flesh out your ideas. And going on from that, it really does force people to kind of all be the same way when it comes to thinking about team comps. Uh, you know, where everyone is pretty much going to have to be very flexible and basically be trying out a bunch of different comps, much like FPX kind of are now or, or were before uh, in this past year, you know, where they would have, it seemed, multiple comps for each map and they would, you know, switch and change mid-tournament or whatnot. Uh, and that's the way that they played and that was quite unique to them. You know, basically every team would just have to do that because they don't know what's going to get picked and banned. So you need to be working on, you know, some ideas for a ton of different comps rather than just, you know, focusing on one. And so basically every team would be forced into a certain style. And then, of course, one thing that you're all going to say is, uh, as I said, League of Legends does have a system, you know, a pick and ban system in it. But of course, League of Legends has like 160 characters or whatnot, whereas here in Valorant, we have 20. You know, it really isn't isn't quite comparable, I don't think, at least not yet, because of course, there just isn't that many agents in the game. And then if you count agents for each map, you know, there's probably like five or so agents that you think they just don't work on this map. So now you're down to 15, you know, you ban four in this case, and, and, and you know, now you're down to 11 agents. You're picking like five out of 11, let's say, reasonable options here. You know, you're, you're quickly running out of stuff that might even just be okay on a map because we just don't have that many agents. And let's be real, we're only going to get like a handful of agents each year, let's say. So, you know, even by the time we get to like 30, it's going to be a couple years before we, you know, get to that number as well. So 
it's going to just take a while to have enough agents in the game, perhaps, where there is, you know, enough to kind of supplement without an agent, right? If you think about an agent like Sage, if someone bans Sage, well, you're not going to get anything that's really that similar at the moment. Or, or a Breach, for instance, right? If someone banned Breach on a map, you know, there, there isn't anyone who's really doing, you know, what Breach does right now. You might be able to kind of supplement it with some other agents, kind of, uh, but, you know, in very different roles and in very different ways, you know, there just isn't anyone who's kind of the same right now. So banning something like a Sage or a Breach, if you really, really wanted to play those agents, but, you know, you couldn't, that is going to be a big problem as of right now. And so obviously this system is quite an interesting one, particularly for someone like me who's kind of interested, like, oh, what does a cipher on Icebox, uh, you know, kind of a, a pro level, what, what does that look like, right? Um, you know, for people like me, it's, it's quite interesting. But, you know, will this system come in anytime soon? Personally, I don't really see it. I think the meta overall environment so far has been, you know, pretty good. Definitely since this last year, ever since kind of the Astro and Jet and Viper nerfs and whatnot. Yes, we've had a chamber problem. But, you know, we've had like one agent be a problem. And, you know, Fade is pretty good, but she's getting nerfed now as well. So, the meta has been, I think, good enough to where we don't necessarily need this. And as I said, with so few agents in the game, it feels maybe a bit premature to be going, you know, this extreme. Uh, would it necessarily be a bad thing, though, to, you know, obviously this is like, you know, two bans that are being banned for each side. Maybe just one ban, you know, for each team would maybe be okay, right? Or one ban that only targets your opposition team and, and, you know, doesn't necessarily target you either, right? Like, just smaller things. That might be a more interesting system that would be more applicable, I think, to the current pool of agents that are available. Uh, but I do think that this is very interesting. I'd be interested in hearing what you guys say in the comments down below as well, because, you know, for sure, this is something that, you know, I think has some amount of legs, right? There'll be some amount of debate about whether this is good or bad. And so I'll be interested in hearing what you think.